So I've wanted to have a drawing tablet for years for my editing. They are fantastically expensive and you feel that you need to be the leader of a design team to be worthy of one. But in recent years, two thing, exciting things have happened. One is they've got really nice screens in them now. And the second one is they've become way cheaper. But the most exciting thing is XP Pen have sent me one over to review. Hello and welcome to the review of the XP Pen 16 Artist Pro. This is a drawing tablet so you can sit there and scribble on Photoshop using the pen tool. It gives you pressure sensitivity so you can write thick lines if you press hard or little thin lines which gives you an incredible degree of control compared to say if I was just to click on the mouse and use that line. Um, as you can see sometimes it's a very destructive tool when you're trying to do um, very subtle layering techniques. So what I'm going to do is just walk you through this photograph here and how I edited it. There's a few things to know is you can adjust the screen to be either like right down low as a sort of writing pad or up as a editing monitor because it, it can do both very well and um, the other thing just to note is it comes with this sort of matted screen at first which is designed to be um, used for, for uh, as a textured drawing surface but I found it just made the images look ever so slightly soft so I've removed it and now I'm just sort of drawing on this glossy surface here which works much better for me so if you just give me a second and I'll load up the images here we have the three images this is the sort of soft image that's got a lot of detail in the ground and uh, Jillian here up on these rocks then this image here shows the detail of the stars um, with the Milky Way it's in twilight just from the uh, time we had taken it. This image here is the International Space Station passing by. It took three minutes to do that and um, Jillian just sat and, and watched it. She's actually surprisingly still for a three minute exposure. I never like star trailing. I always think it's like being drunk. So what I want to do is I want to get the detail here and place it into the stars and then I'm going to cut and put the detail of the ground into this image here. But the first thing I've done is, just down here, I've done a bit of um, contrasting of the uh, Milky Way. And this is just a, a very s obvious thing, is when you start using your mouse, I want to paint some detail back into this area here. And when you use the mouse, everything kind of works all right here. You can see it's coming back. But as you go out into the sort of grey areas, you see now this area is becoming darker. And it's actually more, there's a sort of overstep of the detail here which isn't good. So if we just get rid of that and then if we just knock this into a nice brush mode now when we use the pen you see we have a we have a lot 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 more control here to do this as you can see there's a few sort of marks so I can just invert it and just very very lightly see I'm just lightly pressing the screen here to bring that back and then if we just do the layer mask that'll just Again, I really do want all the details gone here. So there we go. And if I was to show the layer mask without it, and then just the detail we painted back in. It's always a good way to watch gradients there. We just got that detail back in without um, artifacts caused by the editing. So now we'll do a fairly easy step here, which is we'll just bring all of that in and paste it in. And we just do a layer mask, hide it. And then we just get our brush and we just go on. We'll go back up to just full flow for the bulk of the work. And you can just sit there and smear it in. Can we get a really big brush here for a second? You can see you're going to have all sorts of horrible gradient problems around this area here. Okay. So again, there's a there's a funny trick you've probably found is once when you zoom in to a photo and you sit there and you work it and you try and make it pixel perfect and then you zoom out and you see all the sort of gradients and sort of how ugly it, uh, that can be so it's nice when you can just to work on the full image of your of, of, of your photograph and that way you can really see how it's growing and developing um, I think we're just definitely needing a little bit of a finer brush here sometimes pasting out all the detail it doesn't it looks too sort of black and white it's on and off so again if I just invert this and bring it in I'm just using the shadow there and it's just painting a little bit of shadow in and that gives the photograph just a feeling of depth 
Okay, so you might get to stage that you think, oh, it's starting to look good, I've, I've got it, but there's another really good trick here, is you turn off your background layer, and then you can see clear as day the mistakes you've made. So again, if we go on to back to the layer mask here, we can just sit there, and then this is a really, really good way just to make sure that you've not done anything ugly, which actually you can see there's tons of mistakes. We've also got the area of sky in between the stones, which of course shouldn't be this sort of soft colour um, that the ground is. So there's just a, another sort of handy um, tip there to help you edit things um, accurately. So it's this little area here, which is going to be quite a good one. So if we just go back in and we'll just get our brush size right down and then we just invert it and then sit there and colour it in. So if once I've done this again, so it's so addictive. This screen has a calibration option so that's what helps it be precise. So it won't show up on the screen but if I press this menu here you've got various options and that is, um, there's one, one of them is how to calibrate. You can calibrate the colours. I'm working with this in sRGB. I really like it in sRGB. I know that the industry standard is um, 6800 Kelvin but all the whites are lovely and white when I've got it like this. So that really, really does make me happy when I work with it. So yeah, and again, I'm just painting Jillian through here, which obviously is quite important. Um, I think we're going to use probably Lightroom to bring her out a little bit, get the colours on her face looking a bit more natural and nice. Um, but there we go, as long as we've got the, the, the layering done right. I'd say don't do it too much, but if we zoom in a little bit, we can use the shortcut keys on here. And then we can really make sure we're bringing out the detail here and just, you know, round our hair. So here I am actually just going to use this to paint out the ISS and then we're going to bring it into the other image. So I'm just going to adjust it slightly so I can get a really good stable hold of this. So if we just activate Photoshop here and then again it's just a case of coming down in a sort of controlled manner as I can. Slowly sweeping, following the ISS thing is obviously as the ISS moves away from us we're getting a thinner line so I'm just going to try and lighten up as much as I can. Hopefully it still registers as a click. Very thick ISS. So there we go and then if we just go to layer and then layer mask actually I think we just press control I don't we where's the buttons control I. We have now got the ISS that is white on a transparent background which is pretty amazing. So press A control C so now if you just uh, take this image now one of the things I didn't like about this image the way it just didn't cause the leading lines so I don't do this often but I am actually going to move the the flight of the ISS up more so it meets Gillian rather than hitting the sort of bottom of the rock which uh, wasn't actually a very flattering way to lead the lines so uh, there we go okay so we're back in Lightroom and i uh, would show you the uh, Lightroom brush tool. Now normally the Lightroom brush tool has the sort of accuracy of a paintball gun where you can see very clearly, oh, if you press O it'll actually show you um, where you're painting which is really useful and you know you might have seen this sort of telltale thing when you brighten things it'll bring up everything around it as well. Another good tip is never start painting around the person's face because then when you look at the brush tool it'll always show the grey dot over their face. If we get rid of that, now if we go into the options again we're going to use these little buttons here so you can press function key shortcuts and tell it to hold down the control button. Now something really cool happens so I'm going to paint and I'm going to hold down the button here. Oh, And you see how it selects only Jillian and leaves out all the stars in the background. So I can be really vigorous with how I want to do it. Now, she, you know, she, our main source of illumination was sodium vapour lamps. So that's where the orange tint comes in. So if I get rid of that O, I can now cool down the temperatures a little bit, brighten her up a lot. The eyes always go to the brightest thing in the photograph, you see. So obviously we want her to be the, uh, the main subject, you see. And again, we can just play with the colours. And there we go. So that's how to use the pen tool in Photoshop quite effectively. That is sort of partly our final image. I'll just polish it up a little bit more, but um, that'll be kind of boring to watch. It's, thank you very much for watching this sort of brief tutorial. So in conclusion, I really do love this machine. 
it really does save me a lot of time. I could sort of lose a day to trying to nail a photograph and this gives me such control over the layers that I can edit very quickly and I feel that's going to improve the quality of my work. So that's always my benchmark for if you should buy something is is it going to let you improve yourself? So for me it does. Very much this has become my colour accurate monitor that I move stuff off of my main workstation onto this monitor to check the colours. Um, and that's another thing is where initially I thought, oh, 1080 by 920 doesn't sound like a lot of pixels, but because it's only 16 inch, the pixel density is actually higher than my existing monitor. So that's great. I mean, I, I personally, I've got 2020 vision and I don't feel the need for a higher pixel density on this size of screen. I had a little issue where when you turned on the computer, it would say that the device wasn't detected. It turns out to be the USB at the top and I think what's happened is I actually recently just discovered that the cables were tight, quite tight. In fact you can um, you can just see it tensioning up there on the HDMI lead. So um, I think possibly I've pulled my USB cable by moving the, um, adjusting the height a lot because I do that um, quite a lot depending on how I'm using the device with the pen or as a monitor. And that's where I find it's, it does fit really nicely in between the two. I still want to use my Photoshop shortcuts on the keyboard and I still want my nice big screen. Just because of the glossy artifact, it's like a phone or a tablet screen, I'm not entirely sure I would just say this could be a primary editing screen. So just to show you what comes out of the box, the box comes with this a uh, wooden board just for protective packaging, cleaning cloth and manuals and then you've got the foam inserts just protecting the main device here. Then obviously you have the XP Pen 16 Pro with its screen and this will have the um, soft. Um, and then this box really does contain quite a lot of goodies here. You've got the two-fingered glove, which is actually really useful. My daughter lost it and I was actually quite surprised how much um, how useful it is. You get a DVI to mini DVI adapter for, I believe, Mac fans and if you're thingies. You get um, UK power supply. It's straight um, uh, 240 volts. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's nice. There's no converters or power chargers or anything. You get the pen uh, to draw with. There's also a second pen, I'll show you that later. Um, because they assume you are disor disorganised like me, you get two USBs to charge both pens simultaneously because you'll let one go flat and then you'll forget about the next one. You have two USB cables that'll plug into your computer as well. I think you really only need one and an HDMI to get your graphics card. Then you have this device here, so in this bag you have the pen container so the pen container unscrews like this and you can put that down and put the second pen into it they're both uh, identical so it'll sit in your desk and you don't lose it and then if you unscrew this side you have a nib removing tool and then eight spare nib. This glove's actually also quite good. I know it looks really really weird but I found that you know once I stopped editing and I was writing emails and stuff like that I hadn't actually thought about this glove you know I didn't feel I had to take it off or something um, it's only when you're you know when I was tracing the ISS I really do want to uh, be able to put my hand on the screen to do the stability I needed to calibrate it once it did seem to drift so again that's actually just quite easy I can just show you that you just um, go into the settings calibrate and then it's just a sort of very simple message in fact you can see just a tiny bit out so if I now adjust these five points. In fact, I can see it's just corrected itself there and it's perfect. So yeah, it moved by a few pixels. It does seem to be that maybe once a week you're going to want to do that just to um, keep it sort of pixel perfect. Genuinely would wholeheartedly recommend this. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed this and uh, please let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to link to XP Pen and you'll find Amazon links to how to buy these things in the first comment below. I'm going to have a more fun and lighthearted video with Jessica reviewing um, how to draw on this tablet uh, later on. Thank you very much for following.